This is a Fox News alert. Authorities in Texas are searching at this hour for 35-year-old Charles Victor Thompson, who escaped from the Harris County Jail in Houston late Thursday. He was sentenced to death for the 1998 shooting of his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend, and authorities do consider him to be dangerous. Apparently, Thompson somehow got a hold of civilian clothing, changed out of his orange prison jumpsuit, and used a fake ID badge to pose as an official from the Texas Attorney General's office. Officials in Texas are still trying to figure out how he got out of his handcuffs and how he managed to simply walk out of the facility. We'll keep you posted throughout the night with any late-breaking developments in this uh, story, so stay tuned to the Fox News Channel. Also coming up tonight, the fires are still burning in France, where rioting continued today. But what is it all about, and what is the connection to Muslim extremism? We'll tell you about it. Plus, you'll meet a radio host who was fired for saying something politically incorrect about illegal immigration. We'll play the tape of what he said, and you can decide for yourself if the punishment was fair. And this man is losing his land because of eminent domain. But you'll never believe what the government wants to do with it. It's a Hannity and Combs exclusive. But first, our top story tonight, anti-American protests in Argentina turned violent this afternoon. President Bush is there for the summit of the Americas, and he was met by 10,000 angry protesters, some of them throwing rocks and bottles and chanting, get out, Bush. And Bush is a fascist. Riot police deployed in the streets and fired tear gas at angry mob that lit at, at least one building on fire. According to police, there have been at least 60 arrests so far, and two police officers are reported to have minor injuries. Protesters also heard earlier in the day from Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, who denounced President Bush as Mr. Danger and referred to the United States as the evil empire. Joining us now with a reaction, the author of How to Talk to a Liberal If You Must, Ann Coulter, and the author of The Case for Hillary Clinton, Fox News contributor <coughs> Susan Estridge. And uh, it was good, good to have you both with us. And uh, you're going to call these protesters, are they all liberals? Is that, I'm just waiting for you to say that. Uh, <laughs> uh, all left. Uh, the fact is, there was a whole bunch of peaceful <coughs> demonstrations, and then, of course, there were some who did some violence. But um, this is to well, be expected sometimes when the president the same, comes. Go ahead. They do seem to have the same behavioral patterns oh, as great intellectual liberals in this country. I see. Part, uh, of that, part of that liberal intellectual nuance and I, intellectual curiosity we keep hearing about. Right, I was just wondering if there's, uh, there's going to be politicized by the right in this country, Susan Estridge, and, and said, you see, uh, that's what liberals in this country do, too. But this, th these are not. These are militants who don't like I, I, I don't know a single soul who's protesting down there. I don't think, and that we're responsible for them. You can't blame us for what's going on down there. I do think, I mean, what we're seeing is obviously ugly and reprehensible. I do think that one of the issues they're protesting about is the war in Iraq, and I do think that the president is on, is vulnerable, obviously, because Karl Rove is still under investigation. He's refusing to comment about that. He's refusing to say anything about the fact that Scooter Libby is pleading <coughs> in court now and has got his new defense yeah. team. And, you know, the more we hear, the more it becomes clear that we were lied to about the basis for this war. And at some point, there's going to have to be some reckoning here. And, and I the... think we would be in a stronger position if, if the president would be more forthcoming on a that. A large-scale peaceful march by thousands of demonstrators first. And, of course, we're seeing some heinous behavior now. We're watching the burning of an American flag. Um, the president in this country uh, also only a 35 percent approval rating based on a poll out yesterday. So he's got some real problems, doesn't he? And uh, don't we have an obligation to try to bring in the world community uh, to have relationships with these countries like even Argentina that who offered us oil, by the way, during Katrina? Wait, both of you started this segment off by saying, these aren't liberals, we're not claiming these people. And then both of you immediately said, but they have a good point. And let me defend what they're saying. And, let, and you respond to that. No, I'm not so defending the violent I think behavior. I you can have it both ways. This, this is the, the intellectual left and their famed intellectual nuance. Um, and let's see, as for Bush's approval ratings, um, I, think, I think liberals are in for a big letdown when you find out he's not running again. All right. <coughs> You're kidding. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's not going to. Wait a that. second, Ann. I, I thought he was going to try to overturn the 22nd Amendment, and I guess no, that's not happening. No, That's not happening. That Clinton was going to do that. But you I didn't thought. disappoint, Ann, because I think you're tying them to leftist thinking, but we don't know that these people demonstrating were leftists or rightists have anything to do with the American political paradigm. But don't we have a problem when we are so unpopular overseas? And isn't that something we should be conscious about? 
Um, no, I, no. I, in fact, I wish Bush would, would become more unpopular and get his public approval oh, ratings down to the single digits. He ought to be spending this moral capital. The last time we were anything close to this unpopular uh, was when Reagan was president, and the consequence of that was the end of a 50-year-old evil empire. So, no, only good things can come out of these savages hating hey, us. Hey, uh, Susan, I'm with... Oh, uh, wait a minute, on, Susan, Ian, I'm, you don't really believe that. <laughs> Hey, Susan, let me tell you something. I'm just saying that. Susan, when Ronald Reagan went to modernize weaponry in Europe and wanted to deploy Persian twos, and, and he was so outrageous and, and forthright and honest, and he actually called the Soviet Union what they were, an evil empire, and he wouldn't go to Reykjavik, and he said, tear down the wall. And he said, peace, through strength, trust and verify. The world's better off, Susan. And they hated Reagan, and they hate George W. Bush, but the world is safer but because of America, they? blood, sweat, tears, and the financial Liberals. burdens. Right? Look, look, I don't approve, and I don't think Alan approves, and I don't think anybody approves of people burning the American flag, of violent demonstrations. It's ugly to watch. But... One of the things that is also very troubling is the fact that we are hated in the world right now and we can't just Susan, wait a minute. Reagan's Who time. Who cares? Wait, let me just finish. I don't care. Let me just finish, Sean. I care if we're hated for good reason. If you can stand up and say, hate us because we're doing the right thing, it would be different. But when you turn around and the uh. president is left almost flustered saying, well, I can't talk about Karl Rove because he's under investigation, what kind Right. Wait a minute, one second here. Hey, Susan, with all due age. respect, I never Susan, remember Ronald Reagan being in that situation. Susan, I Do remember you? liberals hating him here. I remember liberals hating him no, abroad. But, Wait, well, hang on one second. What sec. reason? But here's the, the reason. No, matters. the reason was he stood up to Soviet aggression. But and he, guy hang on a second. But Susan, up. here's this the point. In the course of this down. program, you have called this president a liar. You have applied selective no, moral outrage. Hang on a second. Selective moral outrage. And you have given your Democratic friends a pass. Because they all said the same thing George Bush said. No. But you don't call... John Kerry said it. John Edwards said it. Bill Clinton said it. No. Hillary said it. I won't the French and the U.N. Pass. said it. I won't give them a pass. I think my Democratic friends need to stand up right now and begin speaking out about this war, are they liars? about what's wrong, but are they liars the like lies. George Bush no, is a liar? No, they were lied to. Oh, no, they were lied to. George Bush is fault on that. And they need to stand up <laughs> and make clear that they were lied to oh. and that we were lied to, and it's time to get and to Bill the And Bill Clinton and Hillary I mean, led the way. All right, let me go to Ann because we're running out of time. Ann. Um, well, I, I say once again, this is, I mean, it's charming that, that Alan and Susan do want to disassociate themselves from these animals in Argentina, um, and, and I'm glad they're not throwing food, but this is not only the ideas of the left, but the behavioral patterns of the left. This is always the way it is, throwing food, yelling fascist, liar, you know, whatever this anti-globalization is, I don't even know what their argument is, but well, um, it seems to me when, when conservatives have a position, they government. write a book, they make an argument, with liberals is just we? screaming hysterical. We're going to chaos, take a break. Chaos, we, chaos. We'll, we have more to come with our guests. When we come back, we're going to update you on the attacks against Lieutenant Governor Michael Steele of Maryland. He's been called an Uncle Tom because he's a black Republican. And then it's been more than a week since the riots began in France. Is the government doing enough to take back control of the country? We'll talk to a former French journalist about the growing unrest. And a Utah radio host was fired for a remark he made about illegal immigrants on his show. We'll play his controversial comments and let you decide if he crossed the line. And you'll meet a man who's in the middle of a showdown with a New Jersey township over his land. And their right to take it away. We'll show you exclusive video of the property in question. All coming up. Lots still to come on Hannity and Combs. Stay with us. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rebecca Gomez. The FBI confirms three men arrested in England may have been plotting to blow up Washington landmarks, but stresses there is no indication of an imminent threat. The men were picked up two weeks ago in London. Police found various bomb-making instructions, as well as pictures of the Capitol building on one of their computers. Fox News has learned Pakistan is holding one of al-Qaeda's biggest names in Europe. Mustafa Nassar is known for his writings to followers, including one stressing that terrorists use only the most horrible 
durable weapons inside the U.S. Nassar has been linked to the transit bombings in London and Madrid. When Ho Lee wins a legal victory, an appeals court refusing to hear an appeal by journalists who've been ordered to testify in a lawsuit brought by the nuclear scientists. Lee was suspected of spying while he worked at the Los Alamos laboratory in New Mexico. He's suing the government, claiming the reporters were given private information about him. Howard Dean's most sensitive documents from his time as Vermont governor will remain under wraps for a while. The highest, the state's highest court approving Dean's decision to keep the paper sealed until 2013. The documents became a main focus of Dean's run for the presidency last year when opponents called on him to make the files public. Next news break at the bottom of the hour. More Hannity and Combs after this break. You're watching the most powerful name in news, Fox News Channel. And for all the latest headlines, log on to foxnews.com. Top Story is brought to you by BP. What would you ask an oil company? What is being done to make us less reliant on oil? That's a question. Um, if we're going to keep our dependency on oil, primarily for the coming years, the initial future years, where's it coming from? stow-and-go seating and storage system. There when you need it, not there when you don't. The amazingly versatile 2006 Chrysler Town & Country, starting at 21735. Chrysler, inspiration comes standard. When you're a star like me, things are taken care of. You see? A second bag. Second. Even my independent insurance agent spoils me. Ryan, after comparing a number of companies, I recommend Drive Insurance from Progressive. You'll get a policy customized just for you. How does the other half live? <laughs> Actually, I do it for everyone. Do you? To find an agent who'll take care of you, go to driveinsurance.com. The Verizon Wireless Network. It's more than phone calls. It's pictures, music, video, internet. On the go, anytime. More than 50,000 people make this happen. People who are highly trained, knowledge hungry and never satisfied with good enough but the best part of being Verizon Wireless I don't just look forward to the future I build it I build it I build it we build it our people our network wait did you see that go back Clearly, that woman is trying to get more fiber and calcium in her diet. Now, it's so much easier with new Metamucil capsules plus calcium. Metamucil fiber for regularity, plus as much calcium as an 8-ounce glass of milk for strong bones to help prevent osteoporosis. Metamucil capsules plus calcium. Stay regular, stay strong. and get a 7-piece living room set on sale with four styles to choose from. Complete your room with this RCA big screen with DVD also on sale. Check your mailbox for our Rentway flyer and get your free trial week coupon inside. Hurry in to Rentway now for the best selection. As we continue on Hannity Combs, I'm Sean Hannity. Still to come tonight, we're going to update you on the riots that continued in France for an eighth day today. There was more violence, and it still seems to be spreading. We'll have all the details. We'll show you that video. But meanwhile, back here at home, controversy continues over attacks being leveled by liberals at the Republican Lieutenant Governor of Maryland, Michael Steele. He has been called, quote, unquote, an Uncle Tom. He has had Oreo cookies thrown at him, and he has been depicted as a minstrel in attire on a liberal website that was linked to the Democratic senatorial campaign website. We continue now with the author of How to Talk to a Liberal, Only If You Must, Ann Coulter, and also the new book out for Susan Estrich, The Case for Hillary Clinton. Susan, the issue is that this man is being attacked as an African American for being a conservative. He is being treated in the most despicable way, but more importantly, 
Democrats, when asked to stand up and speak out against this, are silent. Aren't you appalled by that? Well, I won't be silent. I'll say it's disgusting and disgraceful. I, I, I just think it's also so counterproductive. Look, I can understand people, African Americans, saying why, you know, asking themselves, why is he a Republican, the Republican Party, or conservatives haven't done as much for African Americans as Democrats have. But there's no excuse for name calling. There's no excuse for Oreo cookies. I teach my children you know, yeah. children, that you treat everybody with respect. If you disagree mm. with somebody, you make the case the other way, you vote the other way. Nobody's going to force anybody to vote for Michael Steele if they don't want to. You don't have to be on his Susan. side. Susan, it, because this is a big, and there are numerous state Democrats, and Kwesi and Fume had an opportunity to speak out in a strong way, and he didn't do it either, to my satisfaction. He had Delegate Marriott, for example, a Baltimore Democrat, said that Mr. Steele invites comparisons to a slave who loves his cruel master, or a cookie that is black on the outside and white on the inside because of his conservative political philosophy, in her view, quote, anti-black, because he's a conservative. Uh, it's just outrageous to me that there's this double standard applied to Democrats on the issue of race. Well, I, I just think he's probably, so you know, he's Anne, probably Anne. getting mileage out of it. I'm sorry. Ann. Oh, sorry, that was for me. Yes. <laughs> um, no, I like to see the party of the future throwing food again. Um, and I noticed that this, this, this doesn't happen with Republican Hispanics, Republican Jews. You don't get vicious, um, you know, anti-Semitic um, or anti-Hispanic attacks on them. It only happens, um, Democrats only do it to black Republicans. Um, yeah. but, but once again, there they are throwing food. You Republicans are, are great. But by the way, uh, I like to disagree with my friend Sean here for a second on the issue of, Repo of Democrats speaking out because... Kwesi and Fumé did denounce racially tinged politics. Ben, not, ben, not to the extent that was well, really he necessary. Well, he, he said, he, like was, he, said no, he was no, against. No, not enough. Not anywhere He did near say, enough. I denounce this racially tinged no, politics. No, he didn't do it and he, That's what he said. Uh, Benjamin Cardin pledged to not to use racially tinged attacks. Uh, <laughs> Elijah Cummings, former, for Cummings, former head of the uh, Black Caucus, said he planned to meet Chuck with Schumer those. put it on his website. Hold on. Hold on. Elijah Cummings, uh, former head of the Black Caucus, said they he would meet with those responsible and ask them not to do this. So Democrats have spoken out, Susan. You can't stop irresponsible people. Sure you people. can. What Why you isn't can do it done is to say, Republican? Well, you know, I mean, Anne, what, what you have to do is stand up and say it's wrong. We have to say to our kids, don't behave like this. You say it's wrong. I think blacks, a lot of African Americans in this country are really frustrated because they're doing very poorly under the Bush administration. But that's no excuse I think the Democrats college. are the frustrated ones. Let me ask you this, uh, Ann. And I don't think we're throwing and food. All right, and let me know? ask you this. One I mean, of the problems here is that Steele Steel supported the governor uh, um, going to a whites-only club, and that was one of the reasons some people are speaking out about him. And should he you not know, that's should, a pretty have bad thing it. to do. Yeah, and he didn't you denounce know, it. I mean, what are you um, supposed just, to do when, I he goes, think everyone, when he does that? And go ahead. I think everyone watching this program um, needs to contribute to Michael Steele because I think if we run him on our presidential ticket, we could get the Democrats to actually start burning crosses. They're losing their minds. Well, I, I think that's argue. a ridiculous thing to say. Well, I mean, 19, I think it's really ridiculous. Thing. The 1998 really Missouri Democratic ad. You can't approve. You've thrown at dozens of conservatives. Well, but Ann, do you this approve of white only Party club? This is how the Democratic Party argues. Smashing windows do you approve? and throwing food. Do you approve? Do you approve of white only club? I, a white-only party? You can't um, approve of that. I don't throw food at blacks and call them Uncle Sam, but why is that but, question but, being directed but, at but, me? But, but You're you the guy who only it. She, she doesn't. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, we gotta go, guys. Thank you both for being with us. Coming up next, French authorities say at least 400 cars were set ablaze today in what has become a week filled with riots in the suburbs of Paris. So how does the government plan to finally try and get a hold of this crisis? Also later, a radio host gets fired for controversial comments that he made on how he would handle illegal immigration. We'll play you the comments. We'll let you decide if he crossed the line. That's all straight ahead. It used to be stocks and bonds alone were all you needed. At Merrill Lynch, our financial advisors know it's different today. We'll help all your money, cash, investments, mortgages, retirement, work harder together. That's Total Merrill. Hypocrite. 
Don't let that one little word stop you from talking to your kid about pot because once upon a time you smoked pot. Be the parent. Talk to your kid and tell him it's not okay. At Hyundai, we believe for all the ways we can help you survive an accident, we should provide just as many to help you avoid one. The all-new 2006 Sonata, recipient of the U.S. government's top five-star crash test rating. It's a Hyundai like you've never seen before. And now at your Hyundai dealer, the Sonata comes with up to $2,000 cash back. ever think that the waste we generate will generate support for local events? The same people who lead the way in recycling nationwide and who conduct educational programs for our children. We're Waste Management. Working with local leaders, we're developing smart, earth-friendly landfill properties that serve the community in unexpected ways. From everyday collection to environmental protection. Think green. Think waste management. When you're smiling when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with Some you. Some people are happier at work than others. They're using Kyocera printers and copiers. Kyocera, brilliant color. Advanced technology that's simple to use and a low cost of ownership. They're people friendly. People friendly printers and copiers. Only from Kyocera. The whole world smiles with you. What would you do for a belief? Would you give up your family? Would you give up your home? Would you fight for your belief? Would you die for it? It started with a belief. No one could know where it would end. The Crusades, Sunday night at 9, 8 central, as only the History Channel can bring you. The all-new seven-passenger Jeep Commander, with available command view skylights. It's your world. Take command. Welcome back to Hannity and Combs. I'm Alan Combs. It's been more than a week since the riots broke out in France, and protesters still haven't given up. Over the last several days, hundreds of vehicles have been destroyed and businesses have been targeted. The violence began after two teenagers of African origin died while fleeing from police. Joining us now to uh, talk about this troubling situation, former French broadcaster Georges Leclerc. He's now the executive director of the International Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Why is this happening? Why? Uh, it's a good question. And why is it lasting so long? Yeah. Nine days, it's what a lot. What do you suspect? Uh, why? Th those kids are unemployed, not from a good family because they have problems in their family. It's not a religious matter at all. We saw uh, right. people, the first people indicted, indicted were both Muslims and uh, Christians. Yeah. You know, France has 90% of uh, uh, Catholics, 10% of Muslims. Is this a religious war? Not at all. Today, not at all. Th those nine days, in no way Is were religious. Is this a racial war? Uh, I would say a class war, because they are divided into uh, haves and haves not. But didn't it start as two African youths accidentally electrocuted? They got electrocuted yeah. while climbing a high voltage fence. They thought that they were being chased by the police. Correct, yeah. And the uh, police immediately investigated. And the timing, 6 o'clock it happened, and 6.12 the police came. So you know that this was not related. And this it was an though, some of the racial division that's, mm -hmm. go that's going on in France. Yes and no. This incident or accident, yes, but also the fact that the French Minister of Interior in charge of police uh, was very harsh on the uh, kids who were rioting. Right. And, uh, the uh, Interior Minister? Yeah. Mr. Who made some comments. He promised, for example, a war without mercy yes, in some yes, of the yes. immigrant-heavy ghettos. Yes, and that, that was more a cause of the lasting effect, the nine days in a row, than yeah. just the first two... Uh, so you're saying that government kids. authorities like this interior minister have inflamed it by his comment? Don't say the government authorities, because inside the government you have a competition between the Minister of Interior, Nicolas Sarkozy, and the Prime Minister, Dominique de Villepin, that you know very well, yes. who was Minister of Foreign Affairs during the beginning of the Iraq War. Sure. So uh, they're competing to be the next candidate of the right 
to succeed Jack Chirac. And this war in between them made them kind of not react properly. And that created the biggest situation. George, it's, it's, it's nine days later. It is rioting in the streets. You get in there and you stop the rioting. Oh, I don't care. Tried. I don't they care tried. if there's a political election. If people going on, they, look at they, this. They tried. They tried. They tried. Sarkozy really tried. He succeeded a few few months. It's like ago. the governor of Louisiana or the mayor of uh, New Orleans. I mean, it's just some people do not know how to, you know, get they a handle listen. on it, a bad situation. Listen. Yeah, they don't listen to authorities anymore. That's what's but the, scary. The people. The people, the people who well, are The San writing. Francisco Chronicle writes, quote, most importantly, they're fearful in, in France of a new phenomenon, radical Islam. Is there any connection here? Today, no. Today, we saw radical Islamists Not at all. going there to calm down the, mus the young radical Muslims. Radical Islam. The, yeah, the, the Salafists. You know the, the Salafists? The ter terrorist supporters. Uh, Salafists, you know, you, that's your opinion. But Salafists, when they're When I say radical calm, Islam, I mean those that hijacked a religion, those that believe that God has called them to martyrdom when they kill innocent people. That's what I mean by radical okay, Islam. Okay, I don't know. I'm not knowledgeable enough about Salafism. But I mean, I for example, those that would, t would pervert a religion and, and think they did God's will if they kill people in the, in the Twin Towers. Yeah. Uh, today, it has nothing to do with those you riots. You don't think so? Okay. Today, today. I was, I was don't reading, tell from, me I'm that reading from the San Francisco yeah. Chronicle. Yeah, yeah. I was asking if you thought there was a connection. Now, my next question is, a lot of Americans don't have sympathy, not for this particular position, but for France in general. No. And the reason is we just found out of a long investigation, UN Oil for Food, because France said they were taking a very principled position on the war in Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, Americans feel that they should have been there for us as a strong ally, and frankly, they undermine our effort when we were confronting a very difficult problem. And now we find that the former Secretary General for the Foreign Ministry, uh, we found that uh, France's former UN ambassador, mm -hmm. all implicated in the oil for food scandal, corruption at the highest levels. Absolutely, yeah. And I knew him. He was ambassador here at the UN when I was at the UN. But can I li list the American companies who were involved as well? In not the, the American food? government. Um, in other words, people feel that decisions that France okay. made not to support the, us were yeah. rooted wait, wait, in wait, corruption. Wait. Those two people who just mentioned, Jean-Bernard Mérimée and the other guy, are highest not government. People. They're not government. Don't understand. They left the government at that time. They were on their own. And the French minister of... Uh, of uh, uh, but, foreign Affairs wrote to them saying... But there are say, more people in, within the government that are implicated and that people feel that this was a money decision. The money oh, that they so were getting with Iraq and the decision, business they I get totally in Iraq. I totally agree with you. It was a money decision. Thank Not you very much. Thanks for being States. with us. Okay. Good to see you once again. Coming up, uh, you'll meet a radio talk show whose recent wisecrack on illegal immigrants got him canned. What did he say? We'll play you the tape. And find out how one New Jersey township plans to rob a local family of their private property by way of the controversial eminent domain ruling. You're not going to believe this story coming up on Hannity and Combs. Hi, Mom. Hi, honey. Look in the toy bin. You found Teddy. Yeah, isn't that great? With Stow and Go Seating and Storage, Dodge Grand Caravan can help you save the day. Grab a Dodge Caravan for under 17 grand. For more information, see your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. Imagine 30% of America unable to heat their houses or gasoline $20 a gallon at the pump. George Clooney. Why am I being investigated? Matt Damon. It's running out. This is a fight to the death. Jeffrey Wright. They will fight tough. They'll fight dirty. From the Academy Award winning filmmakers of traffic. They're going to kill somebody who hasn't done anything wrong. Ah! Take the target out. Syriana, rated R, starts December 9th. You have a prototype, they have a prototype. You have overseas suppliers, they have overseas suppliers. You have low cost manufacturing, they have low cost manufacturing. You have packaging, they have packaging. You have an ad agency, they have an ad agency. You have a supply chain that flies through customs, bypasses warehouses, and gets your product on the shelves faster. They have a new ad agency. Finally, we're using my credit card miles. They couldn't black us out forever. <laughs> but Dad, it's summer. What are you, a weatherman? All right, who's up for a little double diamond? Last one down's a coward. I'm okay. Oh, they need a Capital One card. For easy to use rewards, get a Capital One no hassle rewards card and fly any airline anytime with no blackout dates.
Tempt out, ladies, sing this. You're not helping, Bobby. <laughs> Come on. Apply now and earn up to 20,000 bonus miles. Just visit CapitalOne.com slash card or call 1-800-320-3800. Good, look at that! Oh! So fly any airline anytime with a Capital One No Hassle Rewards card. Apply today and start earning up to 20,000 bonus miles. Just visit CapitalOne.com slash card or call 1-800-320-3800. What's in your wallet? Good evening, everyone. I'm Rebecca Gomez. It's his decision, and he's sticking with it. The Texas Chief Justice says he's standing by his choice of judge for Republican Congressman Tom DeLay's trial. Steve Santani has more live from Washington. Hi, Steve. Hi, Rebecca. In a highly charged political case like this, you might expect politics to cause a few bumps in the road, and it certainly did in Texas. But tonight it appears a judge has finally been chosen in the Tom DeLay case. The problem's been finding a judge acceptable to both sides in the politically sensitive case of the former House Majority Leader accused of conspiracy and money laundering. The first judge assigned to the case disqualified himself after being accused of partisanship. He's District Judge Bob Perkins, who gave more than $5,000 to Democratic candidates and causes over five years. Now, some of the money went to the liberal MoveOn.org, which later campaigned against delay. The job of finding a replacement for him went to his boss, a Republican, who also disqualified himself. And now the Texas Supreme Court Chief Justice has appointed Judge Pat Priest, a Democrat who gave small amounts of money to candidates but has a reputation for being fair and impartial. DeLay's lawyer says he's happy with the choice. The prosecutor had no immediate comment. Rebecca? Thank you, Steve. And the next news break is just after the top of the hour. Hannity and Combs continues right now. For the latest headlines, make sure to log on to foxnews.com. As we continue on Hannity and Combs, I'm Sean Hannity. Coming up next, New Jersey Township. You're not going to believe it. They're taking this man's land away from him. That's right, taking it away. You won't believe what they're planning on doing with it. We'll have it in an eminent domain, Hannity and Combs exclusive tonight. But first, Paul Feist, known as Sarge, was working as a radio talk show host for KSUB in Cedar City, Utah, when he made a joke that many considered offensive to Mexicans. His program, which is known as the Trade EO Show, allows callers to describe items that they have for sale to other listeners. Let's listen. Good morning. Yes, I've got a, a handmade, beautiful Mexican roping saddle. Oh, wow. Okay. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The value is probably about $1,000. I'm asking 500 for it. Okay. And it's almost new. Very comfortable. Yeah, for that beautiful roping saddle. Yeah, Mexican roping saddle. Mexican roping it's saddle. Got big horn. Can you rope Mexicans with it? Oh, I bet you can. <laughs> it's around the border. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yep. <laughs> Feist was fired the next day, and we asked Cherry Creek Radio, which owns KSUB, to give us a statement. They told us that it's a policy not to comment on personnel matters. Uh, and full disclosure, my radio show, The Sean Hannity Show, airs on that station. Paul, uh, welcome to the program. They call you Sarge, I understand. They do. They call me Sarge, Sean. Thank I, you very much. Thank you for being with us. Um, l l l I want to get to the bottom. How long have you been in radio? Uh, about a year. Okay, and you, this was like a swap and shop type program. You try and take like 40 calls an hour. I think I read in the Salt Lake Tribune. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. So between 40 and 50, I try to get as many as I can. All right, so this happens. I, I heard the tone. I'll give you my take on it in a second. You, you said what you said. What happened immediately after the program? After the program, I was approached by an employee of the program, not my boss, but another pro employee, and he asked me if I'd said something uh, uh, derogatory toward Mexicans or actually he used the term Hispanics. I and mean, I said, no, I, but I did say something about a Mexican roping saddle. And I said that I made a joke out of uh, roping Mexicans at the border. And mm. he said he'd gotten a complaint about it. And, and you were fired right um, the next day, that day? That I was, it was the next morning, yes. Okay, well, did you ever, were you ever did, given they, an opportunity to explain what you said to the listeners? Do you maybe understand in retrospect, one of the things I read is you try to be glib and funny and spontaneous. How do you feel now, if you had an opportunity to go on the air, on that radio station, and talk to the listeners of, in the town, and, and, and address this issue, what would you say to them? I have to tell you, Sean, I wouldn't change much of what I said. 
uh, it was a joke. It was all it was was a joke. Yeah. And uh, however, when the lady called in, I was I was rude to her. She said she didn't like it. I said I didn't care for her opinion. It was a joke. She needed to lighten up. Then I went to some commercials. Hey, Paul. Any of us is well, Alan? I said it was a joke. Any of us in radio at any time have said things we would sometimes want to take back. You know uh, what I say about Alan? You know. And that's to my face. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it, we could. It's amazing that people sometimes do overreact to a joke. You are trying to be lighthearted, which you do on the show a lot. I'm guessing you don't actually yes. believe that roping Mexicans is a good idea? I don't think roping Mexicans is a good idea, no. <laughs> uh, and anybody, and, and nor, no, it, sir, it was, it, nor was that men as a bigoted comment. No, not at all. So I love Mexicans. As I understand it, the station manager stuck up for you and said that, you know, it was ridiculous what you said, it was a joke, and it was ridiculous to have you have this kind of punishment, but it was higher-ups in the company that wanted you taken off the air. Well, I've never met any of them, and they just bought the station within the last few weeks, and uh, had never met me. I still haven't met them, and uh, I, I think they just overreacted based on someone's complaint. I think somebody in the community made a lot of phone calls, and... and um, and uh, the sponsors uh, voiced their opinions to the Cherry Creek, right. have, and they decided to take me off. Have you made an appeal? I think to, they overreacted. Have you tried to make an appeal to talk to them to, to get your job back and see if you could have a conversation about it and dialogue with us about this? Um, the station manager, Steve Miner, I had lunch with him today, and uh, he actually asked me if I'd like to go back on the air, and I said I would. I missed having the people around me that I worked with, and it was a lot of fun. I, I like the people of Cedar City. And so is there a possibility that could happen and you could get your show back? I, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, I think that would be the right thing to do, give me another opportunity. And uh, I hope that they will take that advantage of that. You know something, uh, Sarge, one of the things I just wanted to say, I didn't get to my opinion, I just think we are t way too sensitive on the left and on the right. We've got to give people yep. a chance to say, no, 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 let me tell you the context in which I mean these things. And, and I think mm -hmm. even... If people didn't take it as a joke, if you explained to them that was what was in your heart, I think people ought to accept yes. that, unless there's a pattern that developed over time, and that's clearly not the case in your case. So I wish, I hope everything works out for you. We wish you the best of luck. A little forgiveness would have helped. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. We check in now with Greta Van Suster and standing by to give us a sneak peek. What's coming up in 20, what, three minutes from right now as she, by the way, Greta, you were great the other night in the plane, and she goes on the record. Thank you, Sean. It was a little hard on my head. Uh, we're going to go live to Argentina tonight. The president is facing protests down there. There are riots in France. And also Dave Holloway, who's just back from Aruba about a week ago, signed a tough letter to the attorney general. We've got him and much more. Back to you. All right. On the record coming up tonight, right after Hannity and Combs. And coming up next, the American dream is now a nightmare for this man. Thanks to the United States Supreme Court ruling on eminent domain. Why did the government take away his property? We'll have this exclusive report coming up. And then later, a new book says a new American revolution is coming. Tammy Bruce will tell us what she wants to change right here in America. Straight ahead. Discipline, research, patience. It's investment expertise in perfect harmony. Van Campen Investments. Shine. look at the Ford Motor Company, innovation has driven everything we've done, starting with the Model T and the assembly line. What we've done is recommitted ourselves to American innovation, dramatically ramping up our commitment to hybrids. We'll have about the same number of vehicles that'll be ethanol capable, and we're using the best minds from Volvo and elsewhere in the company to dedicate ourselves to safety innovation. Innovation will be the compass that guides this company going forward. Verizon Wireless Network. It's more than phone calls. It's pictures, music, video, internet. On the go, anytime. More than 50,000 people make this happen. People who are highly trained, knowledge hungry, and never satisfied with good enough. But the best part of being Verizon Wireless, I don't just look forward to the future. I build it. I build it. I build it. We build it. Our people, our network. here.
filling up with Shell gasoline, right? Yeah. Apply now and get a Shell MasterCard, and I'd be your 15% rebate. That's 35 cents a gallon at 2.35 a gallon. Good for your first 60 days. Just imagine all the rebates. You get 15% rebates for 60 days with the new Shell MasterCard account when you apply by January 15, 2006. Call 1-877-MY-SHELL or stop by your nearest Shell station. <laughs> I know you. You're sitting there with rheumatoid arthritis. This is one of your good days, right? And you're going to wait. Till when? Till you can't turn on a light? A piece of advice about waiting? Don't. Not when there's Humira. Talk with a rheumatologist today. Humira doesn't just help stop the pain and stiffness. It can even slow the progress of RA. Because just sitting there, your joints could be deteriorating. And when they're gone, they're gone. Some people with heart failure should not take Humira. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections. So tell your doctor right away if you have ever had tuberculosis or are prone to infection or if you get an infection. Do not start Humira if you have an infection such as an open sore or the flu. There have been rare reports of serious and sometimes fatal infections and tuberculosis. Blood disorders, nervous system disorders, serious allergic reactions, and lymphoma have occurred. Do it. Talk with a rheumatologist about Humira. Welcome back to Hannity and Combs. I'm Alan Combs. Coming up, is America under siege by left-wing extremists? Well, we know uh, Sean thinks so, but author Tammy Bruce will be here to tell us all about it with her brand-new book, The New American Revolution. First, Carol Siegel is planning to build townhouses on land he owns in Union, New Jersey, but the township itself is attempting to take the land away from him under eminent domain because they say uh, they have other plans. You see, they intend to build their own townhouses on the property instead. In a Hannity and Combs exclusive, Mr. Siegel gave us a tour of the property. If we look here, we see the warehouses, what they are 70,000 square feet. Schaefer Salt went bankrupt. When Schaefer Salt went bankrupt, nobody wanted to touch the property. Everybody was afraid of this property. And nobody wanted to take a chance about this property. The town themselves, in the beginning, they told me that I'm a nut. I shouldn't buy this property, but I took a risk. My plan is to put 110 townhomes. Townhomes where the people will be happy and hence the beautification of New Jersey. It's really an amazing story. Ben, Carol, good to have you with us. And Carol, let me begin with you. Uh, I understand you you spent 1.5 million on Correct. this property. Is that right? Correct. Buying, developing it. Uh, not developing. Just buying it. Just buying it. Yeah. You see, we came in America to try to have the American dream. Uh huh. The American dream is to go ahead to flourish. This is what the American but dream is. Is it true is. you have a deal to sell it for 13 million? Yes, sir. So you have they're they're giving you 13 million. For the so property. What? No, but they don't want to give me the 13 million. They want to steal the property. Oh, no, they don't want to give you the money. They, we, have a ben, sign, we have a signed contract with a national developer to right. build the, the property. It's a condition of us being, my father being named the redeveloper. Right. And the government is saying what? They say no. You can't take the money. You can't make that deal. I cannot make no deal. It's your money. It's your property. What do you mean is my property? What, yeah. Don't say this is their property. It's what, insane. What, what the town wants to do is name their own redeveloper, who uh, the redeveloper that they want to name has had very little experience. In and are they the saying they would pay you for the property? Would they give you any money to have it go to this developer? Or Well, they said they, what, what the process is that they name a redeveloper. We want to be the presumptive redeveloper. We spent the time and energy to acquire the property as of last year. It was abandoned right. for 25 years. Right. And so... Uh, we're currently in litigation, and we have a temporary restraining order against the town. But the amazing thing is, you saw this land, nobody wanted it, you bought it at a time when it wasn't desirable. Now that it's a desirable piece of property, they want to come in and, and profit off what you, your vision, what you saw, could one day be valued. Yes, Mr. Holm, uh, yeah. Combs. Combs. It's okay. Let me explain. We just call something. him Mr. Lib, don't worry. <laughs> okay. That's okay. <laughs> Everybody Alan is, is Alan is fine. Go everybody ahead. is entitled to his own uh, <laughs> point of thinking. view. Go ahead. Look, the thing is very simple. The town tries to steal my property. The township of Union is run by Assemblyman Joe Cryan. 
Joe Crying control the township of Union. It's like, how to put it the right way, it's like a, a marionette. Mm -hmm. No, uh, how you call this? Uh, a puppet and five marionettes. Let, let, okay. let me go to Ben. I want to yes. get to the bottom of this. You, you, nobody wanted this property for 25 years. Right. Right. You see potential. Right. All right. You've worked hard your whole life. Correct. You've saved a few bucks. Right. You buy the property. Right. Okay. Well, we had a tax lien on the property, and then we converted it you into convert. title of the property as of last year. It took us 10 years to convert the property to ownership. To get there. Okay, you want to build townhouses on it. Right. All right, it, and it's within the code, it's within the building code. Right. Okay. Well, so we gave them the idea of the redevelopment plan, and now what they want to do is select their own redevelopment. I understand that. How is the eminent domain question brought in? Because this? in order, whoever they select as redeveloper, they have the right to, if we don't get whatever price that they determine that we should uh, sell it at, if we don't do it, then they can take the property at will. At will. Yes. Just take the whole thing. Now, what's, why For, do they feel they have the right to do it? Here you're taking an area that is just destroyed. You took a risk. You, you invested your money. You put the time in. You want to build the place. Why do they just let you do it? Why are they getting involved anyway? Because what? this is politics. They try to make money. I didn't know that the Township of Union yeah. is involved in the real estate business. Oh, what, what happened was, according to the New Jersey paper, they did a fundraiser and they changed the rules in order to benefit the people who helped them raise a considerable well, amount of sums. I interviewed, we'll do this next week, I interviewed a guy today, Ravel Tire Company in Oakland. They owned this tire company 56 years, and they wanted the property, not for a bridge or a tunnel or a road, they wanted the property st to give it to another developer, and they kicked this guy out after 56 years. It's outrageous. Well, well, what kind of country li we live in? It's absolutely it's outrageous. outrageous. It's unethical, unethical. It's immoral. Even Alan agrees. You agree. What do you mean, even Alan agrees? Uh, Alan, uh, can, uh, Alan occasionally uh, has actually a good point of view that you may, may agree I with. I want to bring occasion. something <laughs> up. Gentlemen, I have Just to bring something seconds, up. Real quick. We've got about 10 seconds. The thing is this. When we left Romania, they took our homes. They took everything from we us. We understand. And you're here to they live the American They took from my dream. love. For my, my father, Mr. Ferrer, we got to run, ring. but we're going to bring you back as we'll one to follow the story. story. Thank you both okay. very much. Thank you very much. Next Thank author you. of New very Book much. says she's a Democrat who supports President Bush. Why? Coming up. Fox News Talk. Coming January to XM Satellite Radio. When you're a star like me, things are taken care of. You see? A second bag. Second. Even my independent insurance agent spoils me. Ryan, after comparing a number of companies, I recommend Drive Insurance from Progressive. You'll get a policy customized just for you. How does the other half live? <laughs> Actually, I do it for everyone. Do you? To find an agent who'll take care of you, go to driveinsurance.com. Wow, that's beautiful. Hey, hey, look at that one. Whoa. I like that one. Cool. The all-new seven-passenger Jeep Commander with available command view skylights. It's your world. Take command. Get all the college hoops you can handle with ESPN Full Court. Available on Dish Network Season Ticket. More than 450 games, top conferences, critical matchups you won't get without ESPN Full Court. Hoop 7 from the people who live and breathe college basketball. ESPN Full Court. Available on Dish Network Season Ticket. Special early bird price of $99 or two payments of $49.50. To order, call 1-877-DISH-PPV or log on to dishnetwork.com slash basketball. Homeowners need cash? You need to know about the no-closing-cost home equity line of credit from Countrywide Home Loans. Unlike many lenders, with Countrywide there's no application fee, no credit reporting fee, no appraisal fee, no underwriting fee, no closing costs. So you can use more of your loan to pay off credit cards and lower your bills. The no-closing-cost home equity line of credit from Countrywide. No one can do what Countrywide can. Apply now. Call 1-800-641-8260. Homeowners, the Fed just raised interest rates again, so credit card rates are likely going up too. But guess what? Mortgage rates have stayed low, and if you act fast, you can take advantage of it. Right now, Countrywide Home Loans can offer you a no-closing-cost debt consolidation loan. Let me repeat that. No-closing-cost. 
so you can get the cash you need to pay off your credit cards and lower your monthly payments. As America's number one lender, no one can do what Countrywide can. Call 1-800-642-2719. A moment like this On the exotic Caribbean island of St. Lucia, only Sandals romances you with a mega vacation. Stay at one Sandals and play at all three. With the best of everything included, from golf and diving to dining at 14 world-class restaurants. With three glorious Sandals to choose from, mega means more of the world's best. For a moment like this. Now on sale up to 50% off. Call your travel agent or 1-800-SANDALS. As we continue on Hannity Combs, I'm Sean Hannity. Recently, we sat down this week with best-selling author, activist, pundit, Tammy Bruce, to talk about our brand new book just out, The New American Revolution. You really go after what you call leftists in this book. You don't use the word Democrats or liberals as much as leftists. Why is well, that? Well, I'm a Democrat and a classical liberal, and I think that a shift has happened in this country where extremists are now directing the show. I also define these labels, what I mean, but really right. the heart of it is looking at how the individual, both on the left and the right, liberals and authentic conservatives, right. are finally holding the elite accountable and taking this nation back. Did you say you're a Democrat? When's the last time you voted Democratic? I voted for Bill Clinton twice, uh, and that I think was well, the I last say you're time. You just yeah, fell off I that was. side of the table. I, she uh, was wrong, but she's admitted it was wrong. No, right. I, admit, I admit I was wrong. But the country was, was great for eight years. Everything was wonderful. Oh, and to, as, as, we didn't as have the these. Well, the terrorists were planning. I guess oh, ignorance. Oh, you mean while well, they were? mean while well, the Republicans were busy trying impeaching him and not focusing on no, legislation that he wanted? No, he was worried about where, who was going to be servicing him next. Oh, I think that getting oh, come more, on. more worried about getting Monica Lewinsky on her knees. Multitasking is good. You want that in the president? You want somebody to do the more? Well, I'm not entirely happy with George Bush either. I don't think a lot of Americans are. I support him completely in the war on terror, but. Disappointed right. domestically. Here's where you and I, you and I have a few disagreements. I know yes. you call yourself a Democrat and a classical liberal. Mm. You say in the book that leftist values undercut the basic freedoms Americans oh, cherish yes. most. And I've got a big problem with that because I think this president with the Patriot Act. He's trying to narrow, well, let's I think, talk about liberals, though, when I'm talking about liberals. I'm talking sure. about the attempts to ban firearms in this country, uh, arguments to redistribute uh, wealth, the, no. uh, the argument to, to, uh, to may, uh, have what you earn be distributed around to, to other individuals. I think it's the argument it's called of... called taxation. To well, pay for the stuff uh, that is now being... They're running up deficits now that we're not being able to pay uh, I, for. You know, as I told you, I have some issues with this president, but the reality yeah. is a real classical liberal position is small government, letting people live the way they want to live. It's not about hate uh, crimes. Right, but, it's not about any of those... Really like small government. This administration has tried to expand executive branch power, and nominated judges that want to expand oh, executive I agree. branch power. I, I think it's, a, I like think it's a complete mistake. I think we have two presidents in the White House, my humble opinion, is that you have a hawk in the war and he's doing a great job in foreign policy. How and it's like we have job? and it's like we have Jimmy Carter here at home. He will not deal with the border issue. He is policy? spending he is spending like a drunken sailor. Where's the great job in foreign the policy? Job the Iraq in foreign war policy so far not doing is very the well. fact that we have not been struck in four years. We what thought we were fine on September There's more global terrorism now according the State Department we than was have prior to September not 11. been struck in four years on this soil, and the reality is, is we've taken the war to them. That is his brilliance, and he has kept us safe, so we can have there, this argument. There's more global terrorism. We have threats all the time. They raise the level. Oh, it's, it's, it's World War Three. Uh -huh. What do you think is going to happen? Because we started that by going into we Iraq. We started it by going oh, into Iraq, a country that had nothing to do with September I remember, 11. I remember September 11th quite well. Is when it started. We can't even get a, a, a lot of people on the left to admit that we're better off with Saddam in his trial and Uday and Kusay dead. Morally, we are absolutely. Morally, if there's we're a lot better off. You, yes. you, you talk about since September 11th, you talk yes. about it, the new radicals is how you yes. describe them. Explain that. It is, the, it is the average American. It is the person who stands up, who is essentially mm -hmm. uh, a person of faith, who despite all the attacks on the left, disparaging Christianity, disparaging this country, stand by those principles despite those attacks. The new radical individual isn't someone like me anymore. I'm all over the place. I'm in the media. It is that average person who quietly lives their lives and stands up for this nation. It is the family that sends their sons and daughters off to fight and do so without any fanfare or any fame. It is the regular American and it's that person through the internet, through the blogs, through talk radio, through uh, this kind of media that is finally having a voice and it is taking this country back from see, the political elite and the media elite. It's very interesting you say that. I have been very, very vocal of my opposition and my anger towards Republicans mm -hmm. on the issues. So you started mentioning them. They're spending like, like sailors. Um, they are. They have not controlled our nation's borders. Mm -hmm. They have lost touch in many ways with the reasons why we put them in office. But interestingly, 
the people that you're discussing in this book are the ones that are pushing them back to the positions of which they were elected on. It is what has made this nation strong. It's individuals, both liberal and conservative. The parties no, not really. Liberal. I find. Well, listen. <laughs> no, I find only one wing the, party, yeah. the parties are, in fact, uh, the same. I find, and that what we hope for now are decent men and women who happen to be Republican or Democrat. But what this nation now will rely on is never politicians, certainly yeah. not the media elite, but themselves uh, pushing Absolutely. government and media but, but to do it, what but, is but right. But conservatives. So I've been under fire because I've been so outspoken against well, the I'm a conservative. Example. Well, that's the difference, is that today a conservative does not mean, as you see by George W. Bush's domestic policies, does not mean Republican been necessarily. There has been reckless, irresponsible spending that I would expect, expect from Alan's friends. Well, that's why the, the message and, should be that the parties can no longer but, be looked to, but, but it's, it's a theory of who we are. But these people that have been outspoken, the conservatives mm -hmm. that are true yes. to the Reagan principles, are moving these guys back into the that's right true. position. And the same Reagan so conservatives right. are, you, are JFK Democrats. And that's where this has all come now down to the middle of where we have more in common than not. And that's what right, this I have a last question. Will there really be a revolution? Is it strong it's enough to make... It's happening now. And that's what this book does. It is, see, I seek to reinforce what has happened since September 11th. The individual coming back into power, bringing this nation, and also, by the way, a strengthening of, of American nationalism. Not apologizing, not feeling guilty, but, but a need to export American ideals to make this nation and the world, and world safer. safer. Tammy, Absolutely. the Reagan left us with deficits, surpluses. Longest well, period of Clinton. peacetime economic deficits. growth and, in history. And the Cold War Surpl making this nation safer revenues. so Surpluses that we can Clinton. live today and have this argument. Thank you for That's your it. time and good luck with the Thank book. You, Thank, you Thank, Thank you, dear. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Tammy. Good to see you. My Thank pleasure. you very much. Great book. And coming up next, more than a thousand rioters clashed with police today in Argentina. We're going to show you what happened when this anti-American rally took a turn for the worse. Straight ahead. session tonight. This man was sentenced to death for murdering two people, but instead of going to death row, he walked out the door. Wasn't anyone looking? How did he escape? Police are here with the latest on the frantic manhunt. Then Natalie Holloway's father tells us what happened recently in Aruba that made him furious. And this Georgia teacher vanished without a trace. She was last seen leaving a friend's house nearly two weeks ago. That friend is here tonight. Plus, we have brand new home video of the missing woman. I promise. I promise that Chevy Tahoe has best in class fuel economy. Plus, OnStar and Sevilla Track, a combination Ford and Toyota don't offer. Chevy Tahoe, the best-selling full-size SUV five years running. Right now, get a 2006 Tahoe LS, starting just under 33.3. That's the Chevy total value promise, and it starts right here. See your local Chevy dealer today. We can make it if we try. Love your everyday purchases with Love the Double from Chase. Love them because now they give you double. Double rewards, double cash back, double travel points, double the stuff you love. Love the Double, only from Chase. Lots of Wi-Fi users work in coffee shops, which aren't always the best places to work. Wouldn't it be great to work wherever you wanted instead of only in hotspots? Now you can with Verizon Wireless Broadband Access. Wi-Fi only works in limited locations, while Broadband Access is the nation's largest high-speed wireless broadband network and is expanding coast to coast. Now get unlimited access at a great price, so you won't get stuck in a not-so-hot spot. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Microdermabrasion resurfaces. A mini peel refinishes. Olay introduces a new at home treatment. Regenerous microdermabrasion and peel. Two treatments, one system. To get significant skin improvement, stay home. Finally, tonight, some of the sights and sounds from today's violent protests in Argentina.
is all the time we have left for this evening. Greta Van Susteren is coming up next. She is here to go on the record. Thank you for watching Hannity and Combs. See you Monday night. Have a great night.